Hey, it's Miguel from Teenage Bottle Rocket, and you're watching M Rock. Hi on M Rock, and welcome to Miguel from Teenage Bottle Rock. How are you? Hey, doing? I'm good. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm fine, thanks. Um, you have a song with German lyrics. It's called uh, "Ich bin ein Ausländer und spreche nicht gut Deutsch." We do, and I still don't know what that means. <laughs> Do you speak any more German or just the lyrics uh, of the song? N yeah, I don't really speak German. I speak English and Spanish and a little bit of French. But uh, Ray, Ray wrote that song and he he speaks a little bit of Deutsch. Okay. A little bit. Okay. Is there a story behind that song? Something that happened on tour in Germany? Not really. I think we were just playing Germany like... A lot we were coming over here quite a bit and so we were like it'd be kind of cool to do a seven inch for one of the tours we were coming over to do with a german song trying to relate to to the audience a little more it was called american deutsch bag and the the cover was kind of a german flag we made our buddy clint dress up in like lederhosen or whatever yeah so that was kind of the idea make make some german friends i like it it's fun us. <laughs> Will you play the song tonight? Of course. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's the only time we play it all year is if we're in Germany. So. I watched your new video on YouTube called uh, Why the Big Pause. W very funny. I heard that uh, the shooting of this video was more like a party than a video shooting. Is that right? Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> uh, I got off work at like 12 and just went and met the dudes at a bar. And... Uh, Fat Records had told us that they would pay for our bar tabs, so we were like, cool, let's just get loaded. And then by the time we were done shooting, the bar was so happy we were filming there that they covered all our drinks. So then we just we kept going and going and going. <laughs> and then my wife picked us up and I was like I was like this. In a slice of pizza. So Okay, a successful yeah. video shooting. Success. <laughs> <laughs> Except for I didn't eat pizza, but there was pizza. Okay. You released a new record called Stealing the Covers. Is it right that it was uh, Brandon's idea to do that? Your former drummer who passed away about two years ago? Yeah. Doing this uh, cover song record? It was. You know, we've been talking about that for like a decade maybe even longer and we just you know you run into so many bands over the years a lot of them suck but a lot of them don't suck <laughs> and so we would sit around being like this band rules i wish that more people knew about it and so we thought that this was a way we could contribute a little more to kind of help expose some of our buddies bands that we thought were really great over the years. Yeah, uh, how did you choose uh, the cover songs? Oh, I think we started with a <laughs> list of like 40 or 50 songs. <laughs> and we spent like months just kind of texting each other back and forth like, what about this? And what about this? And uh, we slowly whittled it down to 14 songs. We, we didn't want to do Hat Nerd, but Chuka made us do it. And, and I'm really happy we did, because now it's my favorite one. So. Yeah. Is, is there one song that uh, stands out to you on this record? I mean, I definitely think Hat Nerd was kind of the... I thought it wasn't going to be that good, but it turned out really awesome. I really love that. And the Big Pause video, or the Big Pause song in general, I think Punchlines are probably my favorite band that we covered. And so I'm really happy we did that. Okay, you released that record on a uh, fat rack course. You released one at Rise Records. What's the reason why you returned to your former label, Fat Rack Chords? Yeah, so I think when we signed to Rise, we were just kind of trying to do something new and you know maybe reach a different audience. And after one record with them, you know, we we succeeded at doing that. We We got a lot of people into our band that hadn't previously heard of us, and we got to do a lot of cool stuff. And then once it was all said and done, I think we were kind of like, okay, we came to do what we did. Let's let's go home. And so okay. Fat Records, I think, 
always has been and always kind of will be home. So we were talking to Fat Mike, and I was like, I, I think we're thinking about coming back. And he was like, please do. <laughs> and so we're like, all right. And it was a done deal. Okay, so you prefer it to be at a familiar record label? With... Yeah, I mean, I don't think we're afraid of doing new things and trying other stuff. But uh, it, it was time to come home for now. Mm. Yeah, okay. we're, we're super happy <laughs> being back on Fat. It's so uh, you are from uh, Wyoming, USA. It's, uh, Wyoming is famous for the nature, landscape, cowboys, and I think there's no big city in it. Is there a real punk rock scene or is it just a couple of bands? So the thing about the city where we live, Laramie, Wyoming, it's, uh, it's like a college town and it's right along one of the major highways that goes all the way across the US. So growing up, all the bands that were touring around the US pretty much had to drive through Laramie anyway. So over time, um, we kind of started to get some of them to stop and to play there on their off days. Yeah. And it really started to kind of build. And having the college there always keeps like a lot of like young people who are into music moving in and moving out. But uh, yeah, I think, I think Laramie has a pretty awesome scene, really. We play there once every year, once every two years, and it's always one of my favorite shows. Um, people just go nuts. And another thing about it is there's not necessarily that much to do, especially if you don't like being outdoors in nature. Like, yeah. you have nothing to do. So when there is a band coming into town, huh. people are stoked and they okay. go really crazy. So it's super fun. Yeah. And, uh I think you are even voted uh, to be the most important band of Wyoming, is that right? We were. We <laughs> are the, the best-selling band from Wyoming of all time. And every time one of those lists comes out, you look at all the states and it's like these massive bands. <laughs> and you get to Wyoming, which is the last, alphabetically the last band, and also by population, the smallest state, and, and there we are. And... Uh, You know, I, f I feel proud about that, but I also I also always thought that um, it was nice to feel like we were doing something not just because we were from Wyoming. Like, we weren't a good yeah. band because we were in Wyoming. Like, I felt like we worked really hard and became good in our own right. And maybe if we were from a different state, we wouldn't be on that top 50 list, but I'd like to think we still would have done all the other things we got to do. Okay. So uh, one last question, uh, how do you like the beer in Munich? Some people say we have the best beer in the world. I, I like beer in Bavaria more than most of the rest of Germany. Um, I would say I like the beer in Belgium the most in the world. Okay. And then, and then Mexico and then Canada. But <laughs> I do like the beer in Munich quite a bit. Okay, th this is a nice uh, conclusion. Thank you very much for this interview. Awesome, man. Thanks um, for having me. Okay, all the best to you for the future. This was Miguel from Teenage Bottle Rock on M Rock. Thank you.